labels. Labels identify. Labels um, pretty much define what they're placed on. That's the purpose of a label. You go to Walmart, you go to Dollar General, there are labels. Whether you, know, you look for the label Sprite, you look for the label whatever, you, you go there and you pick stuff based on the label that's on the item that you want. And the whole purpose of this message is for us to be informed, for us to be well aware of that God has put a label on you, God has put a label on me. Amen. God has put the label that you are his son, that you are his daughter. Amen. God has put a label on you that you are blessed and you are a part of the favored one, his house, remember. Yeah. And so when it comes to living life by faith, one of the hardest things you and I have to battle is a life of relabeling our life. I read this article on Psychology Today where the, the, this, this guy with a PhD and it had, he has more degrees than a thermometer was stating all these facts that the average human being on earth gets all the information they need from the time they were born, from the time they are seven, in order to make their identity. That's crazy. So the things that have been said about you, the label that your mom or your dad placed on you, big brother, big sister, neighbor, uncle, whatever, all that stuff has been collected in order to lead you to your identity because labels lead to your identity. And if you're not careful, you, you think that you got here all by yourself. I, I, I've, come with a, I've come with this report. You didn't get there all by yourself. You got there through the collection of your community, through the collection of people around your life and the things that they have said, the things that they have done, the things that you have said, the things that you have done have made you to be who you are right now. Look at your personality. Look at your addictions. Look at your likes and dislikes, wants, and all your desires. A lot of the things that you and I have connected with desire right now have come back to bite us through childhood. And if we're not careful, they'll keep guiding us into our future. Um, we throw the, um, the first picture of me in the overalls. Um, this is me at the age of three. Not the Coca-Cola bottle, but they got a picture that's coming up. Um, I don't know if none of you don't know or some of you are not aware of, but um, I am Asian. My mom's from the Philippines. And so that's where I get my nice tan brown skin color. Can somebody shout amen? Hello. Amen. I'm proud of it. I love who I am. But I can't always, I can't, I can't be honest and tell you that that's, I've, I've always believed that. When I was a little kid, look at all that hair I had. Anybody, let the spirit of Rogaine come upon me right now in the name of Jesus. No, I'm all right. I've owned my bald head. As a little kid growing up, I was five years old. Or I was, in this picture, I was two years old. Oh, thank you, man. You know what I'm saying? Do you see Judah or Gavin in it? Which one? Which one? Which one? Gracie? Because you're racist because she's brown. I get it. I get it. I'm just kidding. At that age, I was around two to three years old. And I remember being, I remember going to Northwoods Private School. And everybody at Northwoods Private School was white. Other than me and Matthew Prophet, Matthew Prophet was black. And I remember going to Northwoods Private School and everyone looking at me like I was different. I just remember that. I remember people talking about how awesome it was to be white. <laughs> I, I remember some of the things that, you know, that they would say in regards to their skin color and all. And I remember there was a moment in my life where I wanted to be white. I didn't want to be brown. I didn't, because, because over and over, I had this label that I was different. Woo. And the problem was, I didn't want to be different. I wanted to be like everyone else. I wanted to be accepted by the crowd. And 
what ended up happening to me because of the labels that were put on me, because I didn't understand my identity and who God made me to be, I ended up becoming a quiet kid. Because when I would say something, when I wanted to do something, kids would look at me from two to five years old and say, Mark, be quiet, you're different. And this was the label that I had as a little kid. I grew up in elementary school, middle school, halfway throughout high school being quiet because from a little kid, I was labeled different. Then the next picture, something else happened to me. Um, I didn't know what style was. I didn't know what fashion was. I didn't know. We didn't, well, my mom, didn't, my dad didn't take me to get my hair cut. We didn't pay to get our hair cut. My mama cut my hair. Anybody, your mama cut your hair? Man, we got to pray for you. You know, there's a lot of stuff you have to be delivered from since that childhood, you know? <laughs> that was a result of my mama cutting my hair. But I didn't know anything different. I didn't. That, that was a story of my life. But when I went to school, everything was different. They would tease me by the way I look. Now it's not just my skin color. Now it's my hairstyle. Now it's the clothes that I wear in and throughout life. And as I lived on, as I lived longer, I started desiring other things in life because I thought if I get the suit and if I get the nice shoes, if I get the nice car and if I get the nice house, then maybe, maybe they'll look at me different if I get the right labels in my life. And throughout life, I found myself grabbing to fashion, grabbing to things. It was, it was here where this girl, Amber, she would tease me as a young kid and say, Mark, you are stink. At, at the age of at the, at being in second and third grade, we didn't know what deodorant was. Some people don't know what deodorant is still today as an adult. <laughs> Spare the stink. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. And so for a long time, Amber would always say, Mark, you smell like a trash can. Mark, you smell disgusting. And it was from that label that now I'm obsessed with cologne. I like, I'm walking into it and people are like, what is that? Did Pastor Mark bathe in cologne again? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And I found out that some of the reasons why I act, live, and respond in life today is because of labels that I had allowed to stick with me today. And if we're not careful, we are living life by labels that people have put on us and have failed to allow God to relabel his word on us. And so many people, they call themselves a Christian, yet they look like they live in prison. But the Bible says, whom the Son sets free, what? What? It's free indeed. I don't have to walk in anxiety. I don't have to walk in depression. But I can walk bold and courageous because whom the sun sets free. What? It's free indeed. I don't have to be quiet. I don't have to be silent. But God did not just make me different, but he made me a difference maker. God didn't just make me a failure. See, see, because of all these labels, Another label that went on top of this label here in regards to being different, I thought I was a failure. I thought I was a failure because I didn't look like them, act like them, dress like them. You see, some of you might not feel that, but some of you feel that when it comes to your brother or your sister. Your brother or sister was the champion and you were the failure. And you heard all your life, why can't you be like your brother? Why can't you be like your sister? Why can't you make good choices and, and wise decisions like them? Why? And, and if you're not careful, you'll start feeling like a failure. And moms and dads, you got to be careful what you say to your kids but what you, because what you say to your kids determines the label. And those labels will lead to their identity. You see, this morning, we're, we're just going to go and And we're going to go in God's word and look at how do we relabel the labels that have been placed on our life that has led up to our identity today. Is that all right to go in God's word? Is that okay? If you have your Bibles, if you would open up your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 32. The book of Genesis. For those of you who are still looking, um, I'll be praying for you. First book in the Bible. 
Genesis chapter 32, we'll, go, we'll start in verse, verses 22, and we'll go through verse 32. Are you there? Say, you're there. If you're not, say, hold on. If you don't have your Bible, it'll be on the big screen. And in Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 32, it says this. And he arose that night, took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them and sent them over the brook and sent over what he had. And then Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip. The socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Jacob speaking, or the angel speaking, let me go for the daybreak comes. But he said, Jacob speaking to this, some to believe God, some other theologians believe to be an angel. I believe it's Jesus. But he said, I will not let you go. Jacob speaking to him. I will not let you go unless you bless me. Someone repeat after me. I will not let you go until you bless me. Look to someone around and say, I'm not going to let go until he blesses me. That's highly important in verse 26. But in verse 27, so he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. This is so important. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. And then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is that that you ask my name? And he blessed him there. And so Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Remember, names give a glimpse of a person's lineage, history. More importantly, it gives meaning. We talked about it last week. I'm not going to go in go into last week's message. Y'all go on YouTube or our podcast and you watch it. But names have meaning. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Now today, people are given a name and they don't really research the name. They just like the name. Well, so-and-so celebrity named their kid, their kid that way. I'm going to name my kid this way. Mama named him, her this way. I'm going to name him or her this way. Back in the day during culture, cult, this culture's time, the name that they gave him had meaning and definition. Jacob, when he was born, he was born with a twin. This is highly important. His twin brother's name was Esau. And when Esau was being born, the Bible lets us know, if you read previous, before th the chapter of 32, that Jacob was trying to heal. He grabbed onto the heel of his brother, some believe, in order for him to get out first. And so, when finally Jacob is birthed and he comes out, the name that his mama gives him, what would define him, what, the meaning that would be behind his name would be Jacob. And that meaning, you know what it means? It means deceiver. It means a liar. From the day he was born, he was labeled a liar. From the moment he stepped into this world, into, into the scene, the, the first thing that was written when it came to Jacob's story is that you are a liar and you are a deceiver. And who did it? It wasn't his neighbor. It wasn't his crazy uncle. It was mommy and daddy. How cruel. How, how hard of a life would that be? And what they would not, what mom and daddy would not realize at that moment is that labels lead to your identity. And if you hear something long enough, you'll start to believe it. And over and over and over again, that's all he's ever called, deceiver. Over and over and over again, that's all people label him, is a liar, a deceiver. Be careful that what you say over people isn't what you see, but start speaking over the people that you love in your family, what they're going to be. Come on. I know I see an addict, but I see anointed. I know I see someone broken, but I see someone blessed. I know I see a stuttering problem, but I see someone who's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit and going to speak with power when it comes to God's Word. Be careful what you speak and what you see speaking to the potential of what God has already spoken to them through His Spirit. But unfortunately, Mom and Dad didn't do that. 
And so for Jacob's entire life, this is how he lives it. And over and over again, he lives the label that people placed on him. And so if you read about the story of Jacob, he deceives his uncle. He deceives his brother. He deceives his father. He deceives everybody. And the only things that he gets in his life are the things that he deceives and lies to people and steals from them. And so his entire life is dark. His entire life is led by manipulation. His entire life has been labeled a deceiver and wrong. And I don't know. I, I, I think it's safe to say that a lot of us here are walking not in the label that God has placed on us. A lot of us here are living by the labels that people have placed on us. I say, I hear it all the time. This is just who I am. Get over it. This is my personality. God didn't call you to be a jerk. God called you to walk in love. For God is love. God is not a jerk. <laughs> you, see, you see, Pastor Mark, see, I hear this all the time when we're praying for people and we walk in after altar calls done. Pastor Mark, it's so hard. It's so hard. Yeah, if, if, you, if you stop wrestling and let God, he can relabel your name. He can relabel your destiny. It's only hard when you try to strive. It's only hard when you try to earn. It's only hard when you try to work all by yourself. And for Jacob the entire life, that's all he ever does. He, try, he strives so hard to make a name for himself. He works so hard to build up an inheritance all by himself. He deceives everyone around him in order to get everything that he thinks he needs to identify what only God can fulfill when it comes to his identity. You see, clothes, you can grab on clothes and you can grab onto a house, but at the end of the day, the only one that can be able to grab you out of the pit is God. The only one that can grab you out of all your mistakes. The only one that can grab you and relabel the labels on your name. The only one that can change and transform your life is Jesus. Someone shout Jesus. Jesus. Your job can't grab you out of that loss of identity. That salary is not going to change your entire family. You marrying him or you marrying her is not going to change everything. The only one that can change your life is Jesus. Does anybody believe that this morning? But over and over again, like Jacob grabbing on Esau, trying to get out. We grab on so many things in order to get out as well. We think, man, if I get hurt, man, my pornography addiction is going to stop. It's not going to stop. We think, man, if I grab on and have a kid, everything's going to stop. It's not going to stop. The only one that can get you out of any addiction is Jesus. I mean, here's the thing. You can get help. You can read books. You can take all the positive courses you can ever dream of and, and, you just, and build out. But at the end of the day, you can't. Talk a demon out. You gotta cast the demon out. You can't cancel a spirit. You gotta cast spirits out in Jesus' name and through His power and through His strength. But so many people, man, we just we just take by the labels. This is just who I am. This is what I'm made to be. And what ends up happening is we live this life based on the labels in our life. And so many learn to live inside the labels instead of reading themselves of that label and allowing God to relabel us. How many have ever seen the movie Medea, one of Medea's movies? She says this amazing prophetic saying in there. She says, it's not what they call you, it's what you answer to. I love that. It's not what they call you, but it's what you answer. The, the question I want to ask today, what are you answering to? What are you answering to? Are, are you answering to the label, Mark, you're different? Are you, are you answering to the label, of oh, you're a failure, you're a mistake? Are you answering to the label, this is who you're always going to be an addict? You were once an addict, you're always going to be an addict. You were once a womanizer, you're always going to be a womanizer. You were, you were once unfaithful, you're always going to be unfaithful. Are you going to allow the spirit of a living God to relabel you? Are you going to answer the call? that God has spoken over you and say, you know what, I am anointed. I am blessed. I am highly favored. I will walk in blessed this morning, and I will walk out continually to be blessed all the days of my life. Not only will I be blessed, but my kids will be blessed. 
then my kids' kids will be blessed. Everywhere my hands touch, it's going to be blessed. Everywhere my feet touch, God's going to give it to me. Does anybody believe that label over your life today when it comes to what God wants to speak to you and how he wants you to live life for him when it comes to the spirit? Because what you listen to long enough, you will begin to live out. What you begin, what you listen to long enough, you will begin to believe and live out loud. And so Jacob lived this out loud with his uncle. He lived this out loud with his father. He lived this out loud with his brother. He lived out the wrong labels. And here's the problem. How do you know? How do you know? Pastor, tell me, how do I know if I'm living life with the wrong labels? Because wrong labels lead to frustration. They lead to frustration. You're frustrated in your family. You're frustrated with your finances. More importantly, you're frustrated with your faith. I've come to tell you, you got the wrong label. Because here's the thing, the, the Bible says he has not given you a spirit of fear. He has not put a label of fear on you, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Does anybody believe that this morning? Amen. No, I know you believe it, but are you walking in it? How are you activating it? Are you holding strong to win every giant that comes your way and tries to relabel you the wrong way? No, no, no. You fight the good fight of faith, relabeling you what God has said when it comes to your life and how you should live out His way. You see, the purpose of the wrestling match was to reveal to Jacob a new reality, but it was not meant to, in order to change God's mind. The purpose of Jacob wrestling this angel or God or Jesus in Genesis 32 wasn't to change God's mind. Because God's plans for you are to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. God's plans for you are not for you to struggle throughout your entire life. God's plans for you are not to live in fear and anxiety and depression your entire life. God's plans for you are good plans, plans of hope and a future. I don't know if you believe that. I believe that. I believe whatever God says, if he says it, it settles it, baby. And so if he says I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven. If he says his plans for me to be blessed, I'm blessed. But it's a fight to relabel all the labels that you hide inside your heart and life today. And so it's like, how in the world do we get to a place where we get God to relabel us? Number one, for those of you who want to relabel your life the way God sees your life. Number one, someone shout number one. Stop wrestling. Stop fighting. Stop fighting your differences. Stop fighting your failures. Stop fighting who God has made you to be and embrace where you've been. Embrace what you've done. And when you come to God, give God everything. Why in the world? See, we live a life where all we do is fight, strive, and earn everything. Like, I get it. I get it. Like, like when I go to a restaurant, I always want to pay for people. It's hard for me to allow people to pay for me. There are some people, like, they will not let me pay for them. Like, they will get loud at, they will get loud at me, Miss Deb and Miss Dave. They will allow me out in the entire restaurant and make a mockery. I'm like, okay, I'm going to pay, pay for it. Bishop George McLaughlin, our state overseer, he's the same way. He won't let me pay. You know why I don't allow, I, I, I can't stand for people to pay? Because I don't know how to receive a blessing. And I wrestle the blessing that God places in my life. I wonder how many blessings we're fighting away from our life. I wonder how many blessings we're saying no. No, 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 you can't do it. Because we spend our entire life when someone wants to give us something. No, 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 no. You know, how much do I need to pay for it? Because nothing's free in life, right? But when it comes to the kingdom of God, you got to, someone shall stop wrestling. Why do we wrestle? We wrestle to prove people wrong. I can take care of it. We wrestle in order to prove people wrong. I'm, I'm not weak. I'm strong. We wrestle. And what happens here is we start to strive, earn, achieve on our own. None of that can relabel your life. And so you start 
you start grabbing on to certain ways to prove a point. You start grabbing on to certain ways in order to show yourself a certain way. You start grabbing on to certain, certain things in order to label, label yourself in order for people to see a different image when it comes out of your life. The Bible says that Jacob wrestled all night and nothing happened. Nothing happened until the angel asked him his name. You know what I love about the story about Jacob wrestling the angel? The Bible says he's wrestling him all night. And somehow during this fight, during this wrestling match, you know what happens? The Bible says that the angel or God or Jesus just touches his hip and dislocates him. Okay, some of you, I think you got it. That's not a fight. That's like me wrestling my kids. Judy and Gavin are like grabbing my leg and grabbing my neck. And I'm like, oh. And then, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, bam! I lay the rock bottom all on them and let them know I got the power in this family relationship. I'm the one who's the boss in this life. And what happens? God does the same thing. And so here we are, we're wrestling God. And God's like, here's my grace. I'll allow you to wrestle. Say it one more time. I'll allow you to hit me. I'll allow, because I've told you in my word, I've already promised it. And what I say is settled. Come to me as you are. And so if you're angry, come to me. If you're frustrated, come to me. If you're confused, come to me. And if, we got, if i got to stay here all night and, and, and all I get from you is you wrestling me, I'll stay here. Because that is the grace of God in form right there. God allowing you. With all your hatred and anger. With all the turmoil and broken pieces in your soul. And he realizes, and he says, I'll stay here all night with you. But here's the thing, but it's when Jacob stopped wrestling, is when the supernatural being changed his name. So number one, what do we do when it comes to God relabeling us? What do we do? What do we do? Look to your neighbor and tell them what to do. Number two, the hardest thing for all of us, I may mention lightly of it, start receiving. Start receiving. Receiving what, Pastor Mark? Number one, receive the blessing. Receive, look to your neighbor and say, receive the blessing. In verse 26, Jacob got to a point with God, with the angel, with Jesus. I will not go. I will not leave this place until you what? Bless me. The problem, though, with the blessing, that it is possible to be blessed and not experience any of its benefits. in this building have given a lot to the Lord. Raise your hand loud and proud. Come on. Put your hands down. This is rhetorical, meaning answer this in your mind. How many of you are walking in blessing? See, one or, one or two aspects of life, you're either walking in prosperity or you're living in prison. See, this, these are words that churches don't talk about a lot today. When I talk about prosperity, I'm not talking about naming or claiming I'm talking about Ephesians 1, 3, where it says he is blessed with every, every spiritual blessing. That I, I, It's not that I'm going to get everything I want, but I will have a strong mind in everything that I go through. And that no matter what comes my, my way, my mind is sold, my heart is stubborn, that whatever God says settles, settles it. Look to your neighbor and say, whatever God says settles it. Now, I get it. You got a lot of feelings. I get it. You got a lot of people speaking into your ear. But what has God said based on versus what they have said? If you keep listening to what they said, then you'll keep wrestling who you are. But once you stop wrestling and you start receiving the blessing, you start walking in revelation and the reality that you are redeemed. And God will reward those who faithfully seek him and live according to his purpose. Does anybody believe that this morning? The two people believe it this morning. It's like, it's like winning the lottery ticket. 
I, I hope someone wins a lottery ticket and ties on it in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't buy lottery tickets or whatever, so I, 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 it, ain't gonna, it ain't never going to be me unless you give it to me. <laughs> but let's say, for, for the sake of stories, one of, you, one of you were to receive the lottery, win the lottery, but then you still go to work at your $8.95 job, 9 to 5 every day. Homer, you just won the lottery. How about you go to the bank, cash in, and, and, and experience the benefits of what has already been given to you? That's exactly what, how it is with the kingdom, in the kingdom of God, with God's people. Ephesians 1.3 says you've been blessed with every heavenly blessing. You got the winning lottery ticket, baby. And it's given to you by God himself, the kingdom one. And how many of us are activating it, walking in it? You know about it. You've heard about it. But how many of you are walking in that each and every day, believing that God is for me, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper against me, that whatever happens to me, God's going to see me through. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to fear no more. I don't have to walk depressed no more. I don't have to anxiety. I don't, I don't have to have anxiety no more because God is with me. Someone shout, God is with me. So, man, you believe it, activate it, and walk in it. God is with me. That's the fight. That's the fight. Someone shout, receive the blessing. The next thing you got to receive you got to receive the new name. You got to receive the new name. As he wrestled this supernatural being, as he wrestled this man, scripture says, the Bible says that after he dislocated his hip, the angel asked him the name, or asked him, What is your name? And Jacob responded to him with the label that was given to him Jacob the liar, Jacob, the receiver. He gave to God what he believed that was all he had left in him. And until you get to a place where you admit to God what is really going on within, God will never be able to give you a new name. Until you give to God that addiction that you love more than him. Until you allow, him, allow, allow yourself to give God the desires that you want and, want and desire more than him. God will never be able to speak over you your new name. And I get it. It's embarrassing. I get it. It's hard. You realize how hard it was when I told God I love pornography more than you. I don't know how to get out of it. That was the most embarrassing moment I've ever had with God, Scott. Where I, had a, where I gave God my labels. I gave God what identified me for so long. This is the source that I, I run to. This is the answer that I go back to every time I have fear. Every time I'm alone. Every time I'm hurt. God, but God, I don't know how to get to you. I don't know how to make you a source. But I do understand this. If I come boldly to the throne of grace, if I come to you as I am, You'll rename my label. <laughs> You'll rename my label. I'll get to a place where the Bible says old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. But all things will not become new until I give them all my old things and my, all my old ways and all my old labels. Keep your label. Hide your label. But when you get to a place of honesty and transparency and you say, God, here is my label. God says, you know what? No longer will you be called deceiver. No longer will you be called liar, but your name is Israel. You know what Israel means? It means prince. No longer will you be identified to who you used to be, but now you will be identified by what I have called you to be. You are a prince, not only just a prince, you will be a prince of a nation. And out of you, I will birth a lineage, a heritage, a bloodline where the Messiah would come. The anointing would flow, and my people, my people, God's people would be changed through you. Why? Because of the relabel. You see, my, there might be someone sitting beside you right now. All they see is your past. All they see is your laziness. All they see is your dysfunction. But God says, you know, I see a prince, and I see a princess. I see anointed, and, I, and if you can walk in that, I will appoint you, and I will promote you, and I will lead you. If you will listen to the right voices, I hear voices. I know I hear them all the time. If I listen to them long enough, I'll kill somebody. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Metaphorically, maybe. Joking, not joking. 
Someone shall receive the name. The last but not least, as I close, as the worship team comes up, you got to receive the Lent. Someone shall receive the Lent. You know, some of you are like, oh, I know where he's going. You got to receive that swagger, you know. That's why Pastor Mark wore the suit and wore the shiny shoes. That's not what I'm talking about. You got to receive the Lent. Someone shall receive the Lent. The Bible says when he walked off that day, he never walked the same. He never walked the same. He walked in one way, but walked out a completely different way. No, no, no. When, when I talk about walking out here a different way, I'm not talking about walking out with a loud voice. I'm not talking about walking out crying in tears all over, all over the place, not and crying all over the altar. That's not how I'm talking about how to walk. What I'm saying is when you walk out of this place, do they see, do they see you or do they see Jesus? You see, there's a reason why God gives us a limp. Because if he doesn't give you a limp, you'll think you did it in your own strength. And you'll get to a place when someone's living in addiction. Why are you living in pornography? And how, can, how in the world can you live in infidelity? And how in the world can you cheat on him or cheat on her? How in the world? And there you are walking with all your self-righteousness as if you did it. As if you had the strength, the gall, and the nerve to overcome that all by yourself. If it wasn't for the grace of God, ain't none of us in this place be saved. Ain't none of us in this place be a new creation. Ain't no one in this place be transformed. Apart from the grace of God, you and I are nothing. That's why, that's why I can honestly say that in this place today, stop wrestling and start receiving the blessing. Start receiving your new name and receive the limp. Why would you say stop wrestling? Because God finished it. The last wrestling match was on the cross and God said, it is finished. You don't have to wrestle. You don't have to fight. In fact, the fight is fixed in Jesus' name. Read the end of the book. The Bible says we win. We win because he's won it for us. He has made a way for us. But we got got to receive the new name. You got to come boldly with him with your name. You know what God wants to do? God wants to put a new name. I thought I was a failure. But when I got to a place, God wants me to know. God wants you to know. God has called me here to tell you here and wants you to know you are enough in him. I know you were different with your color. I know you thought you were different by the way you dressed and the way your hair was cut by your mama. But Mark, you are enough in me. And everything, every detail that I have placed on your life, I design purposely. There is nothing in your life, church. There's nothing that has been placed in the body that you are living in right now that doesn't have a purpose by God. Someone shall, I am enough. Not only was, not only did God place that label on me, but God would place another label on me. A label that my youth pastors would brainwash me in, and I'm trying to brainwash you now, church. And I'm not just different, but I am a world changer. I am a difference maker. I am a city taker. I am a planet shaker. Because Christ in me, the hope of glory. You see, I, I, I've had people tell me, Mark, don't talk about your limp. Don't talk about your weaknesses. I've, we, my wife and I, we have literally had people... Pastor Mark, stop talking about your issues with pornography that God delivered you from. Don't talk about your past and how you stole a United States Postal Service truck at the age of 12. (laughs) Don't tell people that. Don't tell people that. You know why? Because they want people to see me. They want people to see. I don't want people to see me. But I want people to see my lip. Because when they see my lip, they might see Jesus. 
If they see my failures, they might see faith that can bring them out through every circumstance. If they see my weaknesses, they might think one day I might be able to win out of this failure that I've been in. If I talk about my weakness, maybe they might get some strength. You know, there's a scripture for that. There's a label in God's word for that. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 through 10. It says, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect. My, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses, distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And where do our strength come from? It comes from Jesus. I will never hide a blessing. I will never hide a weakness. Because then I hide the moment. I, I push back, I fight, I wrestle against the opportunities for people to see Jesus. That's why it's important that we live in community. That's why it's important that we take the labels of isolation and we apply a new label that we unite with our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Because a one stranded cord is easily broken. But a three-stranded cord availeth much. God said in the book of Genesis, it's not good for man to be alone. It's the devil's plan. It is Satan's plan. It is the kingdom of darkness's plan to keep you living life, thinking that you could be faith-filled all alone. That is a lie from the pits of hell. Don't forsake the assembly of the brethren. Don't forsake God not just putting a label on you, but us united, God putting a label on us. Together, we can not only change our community, but together, we can change the world. Because when the community that we live in sees our limp, Robin, when they see and read our story, it's crazy. I tell people about my past, Robin, ain't no one believe me. They don't believe me. There ain't no way you acted like that. There's no way you done that. Because all you see is Jesus in me. All you see is the anointing that's on my life. I ain't do this by myself. Don't get this thing twisted, church. I ain't good. I, I'm a bad person. I'm an evil person. I'm a manipulative person. But because of the grace and mercy of God, he has set me free. He has set me free. But more importantly, he wants to set you free. He wants, you, he wants to deliver you from that prison that God cannot change your family. God wants to remove the labels off of your life that you can't get away from that addiction. God wants to remove the labels of terrible relationships of your past, and he wants to rewrite a new story in your life. But you have to get up. You have to start receiving, and you have to start receiving the blessing and apply the new, lane, the new name and walk with that limb. And don't think that for a second you did it by yourself. If you believe that, can you stand to your feet and give God praise this morning? Amen. <laughs>